Hi, everyone. Hello. I'm James from ArcLab. Today, I'm delighted to speak with Ms. Alina Rusu, Founder and Learning and Development Director of Business Academia, on the future of learning and development in our new normal. Alina is an entrepreneur. She's based in Singapore, but hails from Italy, and she has extensive professional experience in Europe, Southeast Asia, and the Asia Pacific. She was part of several global project management teams in Fortune 500 companies, enabling sales growth, a customer-centric culture, and organizations' digital transformation way before that term became popular. Alina had worked in Vodafone, Randstad, Adecco, and CloudMed before founding Business Academia in 2018. Alina is curious about future trends, innovation, quantum mechanics, of which I know nothing about, and is a passionate science fiction reader. Alina, thank you for joining us today. A lovely summary, James. Thank you so much. I'm really delighted to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you for joining Shall us. we start with quantum mechanics? <laughs> <laughs> probably not, probably not. But how about we start by having you tell us a little bit more about Business Academia and the work that you do? Sure, sure, sure. Thank you so much. Well, at Business Academia, we focus on three verticals. And of course, the main, the, the first one is about learning programs. What we do is design and deploy learning programs for corporate and higher education institutions uh, in Asia Pacific and also globally. Then related to this vertical, it's of course business consultancy. And at this stage, we are diagnosing, we are following up and we are coaching professionals and uh, MBA students. And um, yes, the, the third vertical is about innovation and leadership. This we really want to reactivate as soon as travel is back again, as soon as air travel is back again. Um, why? Because we work with our business partners and we bring leaders from corporate companies in Europe, we bring them to Singapore so they could learn from Singapore as a smart city. They could learn about, you know, the fintech landscape, the innovation and disruption in the fintech world. They learn about mobility, electricity, uh, about uh, green architecture, waste management, uh, you know, all these really nice topics. So yeah, we, we, we hope that we will have good news soon for that uh, third business line, yeah. Mm. Fingers crossed. I think the uh, yes. <laughs> situation is still very fluid, but really I think uh, hopefully with everybody playing uh, our part, we can have that resume quite soon. Sure, so I wanted see. to focus a little bit about on, on the, uh, I think the learning and training aspect of your work. Are there like specific courses that you may run for organizations? Yes, so we designed a customer experience uh, management training and we are very happy and, and delighted to have a Singapore uh, government support for this program. So therefore, um, we have also another good news for this uh, CX management program that is going to run until 2022 with government subsidies. So that's lovely. And apart from that, we also help organizations as we as i said before to solve some of their most urgent problems business problems um with design thinking so applying methodologies such as design thinking and, and agility to get those sprints right in order to accelerate their growth and apart from that we also do soft skills training I'm quoting maybe emotional intelligence at work, negotiation skills, sales, business development, and, and so on. Yeah, but the, the biggest, the biggest uh, let's say our, we are very much proud of our CXM customer experience management program that's subsidized. Yeah, and we are running that for, um, of course, for organization in Singapore, but also across Asia and Pacific and worldwide now that we can. <laughs> Yeah. Congratulations. I think that's really awesome. And Thank I think you. definitely um, COVID-19 has turned our world upside down. And how has this training approach changed for you in the last six months? Given that we can't travel and hold face-to-face -face, uh, training workshops as easily as we did before. 
Yeah, we, we were already looking into uh, tech components for our learning programs. Um, and I guess that's, that's where we also met mm, that's right. <laughs> a couple of years back, right? Uh, for our club uh, demo day, <clears throat> it was really a pleasant, a pleasant day to discover your platform. So, <clears throat> pardon me. So we were already looking into these tech components for our learning programs. Uh, so including gamified, uh, gamified nano learning, so bytes of learning for our, for our learners. Uh, mobile first, of course, this is, this is um, also because Asia, Asia population, but also globally, right? So we observe this trend that is uh, getting mobile first. So we, we were getting along with those trends, but also like interactive tools and, and polls and everything we could use to um, make the, the learning um, journey very enjoyable and, uh, you know, a happy experience for everyone. So therefore, let's say that with this current situation, we accelerated that tech component alongside what we have already designed and, and programmed for our learning programs. We, in a nutshell, we, we are answering to a question that, uh, well, one of the most important questions that we want to answer is, how you could keep people engaged while looking at a device. So we took the inspiration from movies, for instance. So how and why and why a person should be stuck in front of a device for more than two hours. So we took that question, we, we then work it backwards to see what sort of components, including tech, of course, could we put inside of those learning programs and make them um, again, enjoyable and, and really awesome uh, to to be in. Yeah. <laughs> Understood. And I mean, the way that we can binge watch Netflix or I think really be engaged to, to, to a screen, I think that shows that it can be done. So I think definitely agree with you that engagement is a very important part of learning. But I think also for organizations, um, because training is viewed really is important as an investment in the workforce. So how do you um, assess learning, given that you can't be in the same room to really read body language or uh, I guess get uh, speak to them to understand their learning? Any ways that uh, tools that you are using to assess the learning of your uh, the people who attend your training? Sure. I mean, that's, a, that's an evergreen question for learning, right? How can you demonstrate, you know, the return on investment and uh, the stickiness of the of the learning points uh, and concepts, you know, skills, behaviors, and so on and so forth. Forth. So that's an evergreen. So what we do at Business Academia, we are not waiting for the program to be over in order to assess that. So we have a really um, interesting combination of pre-course during the program or pre-program during the program and after program and also we include a lot of assignments so we include a lot of hands-on practice exercises that we uh, we design even before the let's say the training itself or the workshop itself that can be done again virtually most likely these days or online and offline I will tell you more about that later so anyways we are not waiting for the program to end in order to measure that. Um, what we do is to encourage this practice and really experiential, experiential learning. Also, on the top of that, we are using uh, our cloud platform, for instance. Yeah. yeah? So the ga gamified learning quits that we actually put into place before the learning starts with our with our learners, then. So we launch, we launch it in at least two sequence, at least in two sessions before the training starts and after or even during at the end of the learning program. And then what we do is measure. We measure in terms of percentage, how many, for instance, how many of our learners have improved in terms of knowledge, in terms of concepts, in terms of uh, applying, you know, the knowledge. So we do have along this quiz, we design it in such a way that we can actually measure. So it's really interesting. Um, again, we use data and we also use practical 
practical workshops and practical exercises in order to make sure that we actually see, visibly see what's going on, even if it's on a virtual, uh, virtual presence. And then with the use of data that we extract from our club, that, that's really, really impressive how, ma how many insights we can get from there and, you know, um, start to having qualitative conversation, especially on the follow-up and coaching session on where are the strong points so how many skills for instance were were acquired we can measure that as i said and also suggest where are some of the areas where people demonstrate to be a little bit more weak and then we can further develop so this is where we for instance encourage a lifelong learning right a never-ending learning process that doesn't start or stops with our learning pro uh, programs it actually continues because everything is kind of linked together if you wish thank you and i definitely agree with the lifelong learning uh, comment and i think it's uh, really really uh, important that you've put in what i if i may summarize a pre-course as well as a post-course assessment and then you measure the delta and that actually is a really a uh, simple but effective way of ascertaining learning so thank you for actually putting that all into practice. Could you share with us maybe some of the client organizations that you serve? And you talked about a lot about virtual. A lot of can you share with us some of this virtual training that you now conduct for them? Sure, sure. Uh, so again, we are we are running a lot of our uh, customer experience management training uh, for 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 the organization that we work with, and this is again thanks to uh, having the IMDA and Skills Future Singapore uh, supporting us. So this is really really um, very very good. And then again, we have human design thinking workshops. We have sprints and agility. We also have emotional intelligence and soft skills on, on the other hand. And from there, we go into coaching sessions, we go into follow-up, implementation, and, and um, so many more. But we are industry agnostic. Uh, why is that? Because, you know, everyone has some business problems, some business emergency to work on or opportunities. So we actually work um, cross industries. I, I can quote, you know, uh, from telco, telecommunication to um, consumer goods to uh, airports to mm. universities, uh, cable industry. Uh, we really, we really have a media. Of course, we have we have media. We have some other uh, lovely clients we are working and we are serving. Um, so again, uh, it's really not important for us to position ourselves in a specific industry, because with the programs that we do, we actually support the implementation of an entire structure. When you talk about people, you talk about processes, you talk about tools, we really, uh, we are really positioning ourselves also into be um, collectors, for instance, of business intelligence tools. So we, we collect the hottest and the coolest business intelligence platforms, for instance, or CRMs. Um, that, that's why we're also teaching ourselves a lot about, about uh, what's out there. And then we extract you know the most uh, the most uh, easy to use right the most easy to use the most impactful um also cost versus uh, cost versus um, revenue so we do that and we synthesize that for our customers so for them to have access to a, a, a list of of names that uh, they can actually look into and and adopt as tools, right? We are talking about business, uh, business transformation and digital transformation, basically. Yeah. Very nice. So talking about trends and uh, intelligence, what, are, what do you think are some of these, uh, I guess, key trends that possibly has gone on an irreversible course since COVID-19 uh, impacted us? Well, um, few are coming into my mind. So for a learning and development, for instance, is um, the integration online and offline, I think that is going to stay and is as relevant as it is for the retail industry or F&B or you name it. Yeah. So the integration of this of these two of these two worlds, definitely. Um, and, and, 
you can actually see, right, an explosion of, of the online for sure. But then when it comes to, to the human interaction, uh, as you said, it's also very, very important. So we need to, we need to understand how to balance that um, according also to what is permitted. But definitely this integration of the online and offline, as, as I see it. Then, then of course, uh, data. It's very important. So n no longer, you know, based on uh, spraying and praying, or you know, putting out there as much content as we can, and then, uh, and then, hoping and, and praying that our our people and our colleagues will uh, get along with that. Is just looking into um, well, cleaning data first of all. So clean clean the data, analyze data, and extract the the insights from there in order to really understand you know where where we stay and where we should be and what should be done in order to in order to reach to that to that uh, to that point so insights from data and also you know enabling enabling a a proactive learning culture a la lifelong learning culture right so something that is is uh, is ongoing and is relevant to the trends as well yes if you look at l d if you look at the l d um, maybe pre uh, pri uh, prior to what's happening today you could maybe notice most of the organization will run by reacting to what was happening so they would have suggestion for uh, skills or behaviors that they would encourage the, the the company to look into and then the learners will actually have a catalog and sh choose from catalogs choose the topics that they would think is more relevant for them but if you want this is a little bit like going to the doctor while you feel sick and the doctor will ask you so what shall i give you tell me what do you need <laughs> right um and yeah th this is this makes sense for a while, but now it's actually looking into trends and trying to get that advantage, uh, um, competitive advantage to say, what are the skills that are necessary today, but most likely tomorrow. So then how can I support my people to go towards that path? Awesome. I think that's really a very uh, insightful uh, analysis into the trends that you've, you've seen. So in line with the vision of, of ArcLab, we usually like to keep things short and sharp and impactful. So before we end off, could you share like maybe two last things, which is number one, what are some tips that companies need to do to equip their workforces to be ready for the digital future? And I guess the final point on what's next for business academia. Thanks, thanks. Uh, well, as you said, keep it simple and enjoyable. Yes, keep the uh, keep the learning experience really enjoyable. A lot of people, a lot of uh, a lot of colleagues in in companies, um, they might be scared of all this uh, turning to digitally completely, turning into the um, their business models digitally completely. Even though you know there's a lot of buzz and there's a lot of, of going on out there, but we might underestimate the the, the power of resistance. So keep it, keep it simple and enjoyable. And therefore, again, as I mentioned before, we are also a huge supporters of nano learning uh, and also gamified platforms. Of course, um, as, as I said, mobile first, we, we, we want that for our learners. Uh, so try to have, try to support your people with also just in time, just enough and just for your learners, some sort of, of, of journey, whereas um, we are no longer as learning and development professionals reacting to what's going on, but we are proactively opening, opening the learning, um, the learning library, if you wish, to our, to our, uh, to our colleagues. And at this point, I would say, I would, I would uh, look into, as you said, look into the trends where the L&D department really becomes um, a part of operations. So it's not... Uh, the one that has the key to uh, exclusively to the learning points, but enables everyone in the in the organization, managers including, right, to adopt this uh, this lifelong learning culture 
and always being on the top of the game, um, stay relevant, yes, because everyone is replaceable. I just re uh, read this uh, this quote from, uh, I guess, Netflix was uh, announcing this, right? That was quite an interesting, interesting uh, headline over there. Everyone in this company um, is replaceable. So at this point, how we can stay relevant, how we can stay on the top of the game. Cool. And uh, what's next for Business Academia? <laughs> well, thank you for that. Well, we are as we are working hard to um, with our learning programs, right, to enable uh, organization in their transformation journey and to support the professionals, so their teams and their managers, their leaders, all together to uh, to again work together and make things happen. Um, we are also, as I said, hoping yes that we could reactivate again the innovation and leadership program, so we can make this exchange programs. Um, between between uh, Singapore, Southeast Asia, and and Europe, and some other parts of the world, to just to learn, you know, uh, uh, awesome awesome things about uh, the cities of the future. We can get really uh, very good inspiration from from Singapore on that side. And um, on another note, we are working on some other cool projects. One of each is to um, have a mobile app that supports um, people that have been made redundant and people that find themselves without a job in, in order to supporting them to exchange their skills for other skills that are relevant uh, on the workplace. So, so we are really working on, on different projects. We are very enthusiastic, very happy to be also in this, in this uh, industry, in the learning and development um, and innovation. So yeah, a lot on, uh, on our plate. <laughs> as I know, you have a lot of projects as well <laughs> coming up. So really nice. That's right. And uh, I guess thank you for really sharing uh, what uh, you have been doing and will be doing, as well as the tips for organizations to take on board, just in time, just enough, and just for you. Alina, thank you very much for spending your time with Arc Lab today. And I wish you all the very best. Most welcome, James. I'm really, really glad to, uh, to having you as our trusted partners. Thank you.